Listen up, everybody. Your fantasy football drafts are coming. It's time to show your league what puny and pathetic trash bags they truly are. The ultimate draft kit from the fantasy footballers is the easiest way to annihilate them. Tiered rankings, full projections, sleepers, breakouts, it's got it all. Go to ultimatedraftkit.com and secure yours immediately. I said do it now. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Get to the chopper. Welcome in. Welcome to the show. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Special guest today, Jay Grizz in the house, sitting in for Mike. But do not be alarmed, all of you out there who desperately, uh, maybe you're afraid there won't be two out of ten, three out of ten one-liners on the show today. Oh, no, I'm still, I'm here. Um, well, we, look, it's it's fortuitous that Mike is vacationing with his family today well deserved gets a break from the show but here's where you benefit foot clan we've got a head to head never been done mano y mano they said it couldn't be done mock draft <laughs> oh you're going down so incredibly <laughs> hard andy you're going to lose live on the show today it's been a while since we've done a mock and i'm excited um, to dismember you. Dismember? Yeah. No, I'm you're literally going to cut limbs off. That? You're going you're not to gonna be... dismantle my draft. You're going no. to dismember your my body. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay this, sounds... this got real dark. Uh, it sounds worse than it is. I got inspired by Arnie opening the show. A lot of his movies. Mm-hmm. He does some pretty. <laughs> and he normally accompanies the dismembering with like the one liners as well. Right. All right. So freeze. It, uh, this is going to be. A um, bloodbath of a show. Yes, yes. Hide your children. Follow the show on Twitter at the FF Ballers. It's going to be an exciting one today. We're on Instagram, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. The community over at jointhefoot.com and the websites, the fantasy footballers.com. We do need to sound the alarm today. Oh, yes. Foot Clan. A symbol. <laughs> Just 10 days left until we kick off the People's Fantasy Tour, the live live fantasy footballers experience. Up first, Chicago. Chicago in 10 days. Tell your friends, tell your family, get tickets. Hide your pizza parlors. We're coming for the deep dish. Yeah. And the medium dish. And the thin crust. I will. Dude. I know. Pan's great, but thin crust is where it's at. Oh, really? I you mean, don't like the deep dish? No, 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 no. P- oh, please don't hear what I'm not saying. <laughs> I love deep dish, and it's one of like the top ten <laughs> foods out there. But I think it's behind a thin crust pizza. Now, if you had, if you didn't listen to yesterday's footcast at jointhefoot.com, our uh, Foot Clan mailbag show, you-, you wouldn't have heard Jason rant and rave about uh, al- one of those the Hostess apple pies. Apparently. <sighs> See, I'm going to distract you during the draft. I'm going to pull those out for every draft pick. Oh, why didn't I do that? This will be the best. That, this would be the best day of my but life. But would you would you go to town on the deep dish or would you do the hostess? No, hostess uh, apple pies are way above anything, everything else. All right, the live show up first, Chicago at Thalia Hall on June 21st. Then we hit head to New York City. New York City on June 29th at Gramercy Theater in Manhattan. We cannot wait to see everybody, so make sure you get your tickets early at BallersLive.com because uh, L.A. already sold out. Mm -hmm. Limited tickets left for Chicago, New York, San Francisco, and Phoenix. They're on sale now, BallersLive.com. Come visit us. We cannot wait to see you. And a a quick reminder before we jump right in today, because we want to get to this mock draft, 
But uh, a quick reminder, ultimatedraftkit.com, if you want the Ultimate Draft Kit, $1 of every Ultimate Draft Kit sold goes directly to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Excited about that partnership this year with St. Jude for both the live tour and the Ultimate Draft Kit. Now, I want to get uh, headfirst into the draft. Are you prepared for that? I was. I, I do this for a living. So I'm um, very prepared for this. But I will jump. I will. Uh, Newt McBoots on Twitter has our quick question for the day. Okay. So I feel like we need to answer this uh, because it's coming from Newt McBoots. Certainly. How do you change your draft strategy for different sized leagues? Very simple question, but uh, one we get a lot. Sure. How does the draft strategy change if you're, let's say you're in an eight man, a 10 man, a 12 man league, a 14 Mm -hmm. team league? How do you look at draft strategy? Because we kind of talk probably from the paradigm of like a 12 man league most often. Yeah. I mean, in fact, our mock draft, 12 man league. When you say most often, you mean uh, every time. That's when we, when we're not specifying, we're always talking about a 12 uh, man league. The differences aren't that extreme. I think sometimes they're overblown between different leagues. But I will say this. If you're in a small league, if you're in an 8 or a 10-man league, everyone's teams are going to be great. They're, go- You know what I mean? Like you On you, paper, you all have superstars. Loaded. loaded. So it's really... Like the- my team at the end of today's draft will be an example of what an 18-team team, eight team league would look like. Well, well, here's the great thing. Foot Clan... You're going to get to vote on this. So once we're done, Brooks, make sure that our teams get up and that there's a poll everywhere so that I can dominate Andy in the polls and you can have your pretend victory right now. Um, but what, regarding, I'll put Sammy Watkins down in the first round for you already, so don't worry about it. I He will be worth it at the end of the year, but I'm going to let him drop to my value. However, I'm talking to Newt right now. Yes, Newt. McBoots. Um, yeah, and so... If I'm in a smaller league, I am actually more willing to – like, first round, I would be willing to take Travis Kelsey because there's only Travis Kelsey, Zach Ertz, and maybe George Kittle at that position. At running back, at wide receiver, even at quarterback – The advantage is more pronounced in a league where you have less total teams is what you're saying. Exactly, because I – my the running back depth issue that is usually there in a 12-team league – is less pronounced in an eight-team league, but the gap between those tight ends are, are there. On the flip side, if I am in a large league, a 14, 16-team league, I'm going to play much, much, much safer. I am avoid all risk. I want to, um, I want to have tried and true assets, no injury risks. Um, I'm not going to swing for the fences. And just to fill in the the blanks here, what you're saying is that uh, you're playing it safer because availability of fill-in players, competition on the waiver wire, depth of your bench, those type of things are affected greatly by like a 14, 16 team league. Exactly. So you want to mitigate some of that risk. Also, to speak to the first point, like in a league like that, if you're, you know, you're in a 14, 16 team leagues, only two of those teams have Zach Ertz and Travis Kelsey. The rest of the weeks. You're facing not them. Right. And you may, I mean, look, fantasy leagues don't go 16 weeks before the playoffs. You might not even face them right. in so terms of Kelsey and Hurts. So your bad tight end is probably going up against another bad tight end right. on the reg. And I would just, you know, it's one of those things where, look, people lose their first round pick and come back and win championships. It happens every single year, all the time. But it's much more difficult to do in larger leagues where the waiver wires are sparse. And I agree. So, yeah, play it safe. All right, let's get into it. Jason, you are my enemy from this point forward. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. All right, let me break it down. Here's what we're doing. And by the way, you can follow along with the draft uh, visually. We're doing it on Sleeper. The draft board is up on YouTube, youtube.com slash fantasyfootballers. So if you're listening and you want to follow along, see the picks and the context and all that stuff, you can do it on YouTube. Uh, It's a 12-team league, half point per reception, Mm -hmm. traditional uh, one quarterback, two running back, two wide receiver, one flex, one tight end, and then five bench spots. Right. And we have decided to draft. Now, before the show started, we said, hey, we want to draft back-to-back. 
Yeah, so that I can snipe you every other round. Um, exactly. And we, we Rochambeau'd for who would go first. So you are drafting from the sixth spot. I am drafting from the seventh spot uh, because you beat me in Paper, Rock, Scissors, which will be the only thing you defeat me at today. And the draft, we're starting it. Is there anything else I need to say, Brooks? Am I forgetting anything? Let's do it. All right. First pick off the board, Ezekiel Elliott, gone. Christian McCaffrey, number two. Saquon Barkley goes three overall. Melvin Gordon, number four. Alvin Kamara, number five. And here we are, Jason, on the clock. What's going through your head? Well, there's there's four. This is fun. You have to reveal things yes, to me I know right before it, I, it, I take – the better player it is really tough in the sense that like we do the show for you but we're still so incredibly uh competitive competitive that i i really want to win but i'm going to say everything i'm thinking even if it, i will do this i mean it's obviously going to give you great advice uh but there's only four players here that are really in consideration for me uh for me i'm looking at do i want to go DeAndre Hopkins, Devontae Adams. Take First one wide of the, out off the board. The top wide receivers. This is a year where I actually am far more willing to do that in real drafts because I think that the depth of the top tier running backs is larger this season than in the past few. Um, and, and so that means in that second round, I can get a running back that I'm okay with. Tier that one, tier two running backs, pretty much gone. First yeah. five picks, running backs. <clears throat> So you're talking about there being a pretty similar feel to guys like David Johnson, James Conner, Joe Mixon to you compared to maybe the wide receiver position? I'm actually speaking more to the second round, like the 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 guys like, um, you, you know, Todd Gurley is probably falling to the second round in a lot of drafts. And uh, yeah, Damian Williams and guys like that, that you can get in the second round and they they have a chance to be really special. <laughs> Todd, Todd Gurley's ADP, the visual that I have in my head right now, it's like the elevator. It starts at the top floor, and then like it loses the brakes a little bit, and it just it it drops like three or four floors at a time. Yeah. And then another piece of news comes out, and it drops a little further, and you don't know when the free fall is going to happen. Yeah, it's it's not good. So here's the thing, though. I want to win the poll at the <laughs> oh, end. Oh. And okay. I think that the, you're going to need to be loaded at running back. So that's where I'm going to go. Um, for this mock draft, it, either is a good strategy. I've, I've had people ask, you know, what about either, either or either are ways you can say it, <laughs> grandpa. Um, that's how I yell at my grandpa. So who's your pick? My pick is going to be David Johnson. It's between David Johnson and, uh, Joe Mixon, but David Johnson to me, look, 2016, he was the best back in football. We saw what happened with Todd Gurley when he went from a bad offensive coordinator to a great offensive coordinator. You see uh, the the usage in college of Cliff Kingsbury and how he used the quarterback. And, and you read David Johnson himself talking about, look, he says it's going to be like 2016 again from a scheme. We're going to live in shotgun. That's our new home. So so to those, though, that so we had the show on Thursday last week, and one of the, the quick question was, who's the most overhyped addition in the offseason? Mm -hmm. and some people brought up other names that we didn't bring up on the show, and one of the things that was brought up was Kyler Murray, Cliff Kingsbury. It, it's hard to argue that they are. there's no one more overhyped than those additions to Arizona or from Phoenix. We want to see that, uh, that prolific offense. David Johnson thinks he's going to be the best player in the league again. So does Sammy Watkins. I saw his tweet this morning. So uh, I understand it. I believe it. I buy into it, and it would have been my pick had you let him through. Sweet. But there, I, it's still hard to say you go from the worst offense in football to the upper echelon, I think is what some people would say. Uh, yeah, and I would say we have history of that um, with Todd Gurley sure. just a few years ago. And, and I would argue this. This is the, the sixth pick in the draft. Last year, David Johnson was terrible and on the worst offense in the league, and he was the 10th running back in fantasy football. He, he has nowhere to go but up. I think that's what people need to remember is that he was on the worst offense in football with the worst offensive coordinator, worst quarterback performance worst of the year, calling. offensive line struggles, and then was the tenth running back. So you're you're talking about it's not a leap to go. I mean, you're taking him at six. So you made my pick easy for me. Sweet. So I would have been laboring just like you over Hopkins, Devontae Adams, David Johnson. I'm not jumping in on Gurley here. I like going running back in the first round, 
But at this point in time, this is why we say stay water in your draft. This is why we do not prescribe uh, saying, oh, I'm going to go. People ask all the time, do I go running back, then wide receiver, then running back? And like determine that before the draft starts. Never do that. Never mm -hmm. determine prior to the draft. Yeah, don't say I'm going to go two running backs, then wide out, then tight end. That's locking yourself into a situation that's not going to help your team. But because of what you did in this draft, it's easy for me here to say, DeAndre Hopkins is my pick. He's yep. bona fide, tried and true. Can um, I can I just make one quick argument for Carlos Hyde? Uh, I, <laughs> I just I mean Kansas City Chiefs. He could be the one, <laughs> the one. Though yeah. he could he could take that job. I so. like I like arguments that believe <laughs> in him being chosen. He's right. he's the Harry Potter of uh, the NFL. Carlos, uh, you're a wizard, <laughs> Carlos. <laughs> So I will go with DeAndre Hopkins. I'll be the, the one to break from the running back run and go with the best wide receiver in football. I'll take DeAndre Hopkins and his 115 receptions and 1,500 yards and 11 touchdowns. Uh, I'm excited uh, about the stabilizing force that he is for my fantasy team. Okay. Rest of the first round, and we'll talk more about these first few rounds than we will later, but uh, Devontae Adams went right after Hopkins. I did think for a moment about going Devontae Adams. I didn't, though. Lev Bell, Todd Gurley at 110. That's about where I'm seeing him go in drafts right about now. That's where somebody eventually bites the bullet and mm -hmm. takes him. James Conner at 111. And then Julio Jones at 112. All right, a quick pause. We always want to thank the sponsors of today's show, keeping this podcast going, Jason. And we got our new one, Turo. Mm. Now, a lot of you out there, you've probably already heard of Turo. Sounds delicious. Uh, no, you don't need it. It's an app, Jason. Oh, sorry. Not, not Churro? No, not Churro. It's very similar. Turo is the largest car sharing marketplace in the world. They basically modernized the concept of renting a car. It's actually really it's cool. It's awesome. It's available across the United States, Canada, UK, Germany. 10 million users already on the Turo app. They have the widest selection of cars available, so you can choose the right car for whatever occasion, often at a much lower cost than rental car companies. You get a pickup truck real quick for moving day, which I never would have oh, been that's able genius. to do. Or a flashy convertible for a getaway. You can find the perfect car for your next adventure on Turo. Or if you're in the market for a new car, you can book a car on Turo so you can see what it's like. So you basically do an extended test drive by using the Turo app. Download the Turo app today. That's T-U-R-O on the App Store or Google Play or visit Turo.com. Get $25 off your first trip when you sign up with the promo code FOOTBALLERS at checkout. Terms apply. And Foot Clan, you know you love live events. We're putting them on. Live events are the best thing to go to, and you have to use SeatGeek to get your tickets. SeatGeek is the absolute best, easiest way. It's so functional. Like, when I get my tickets, I hate going to other ticketing sites for any reason because all their maps are stupid like yeah, I, just, I got used kinda, to seat geek where it shows yeah. you one through ten shows you the color scale always you like a, colors you know how to look at a color always a good layout of of the actual venue you can see exactly where the it's just so much easier to find the right seat i mean look seat geek has over fifty thousand five star reviews it's good you will like it get your tickets on SeatGeek, you won't be disappointed. And they're even going to give you $10 off your first SeatGeek purchase. All you need to do is use our promo code. You download the SeatGeek app today. Use promo code BALLERS for $10 off your first purchase. That's promo code BALLERS for $10 off your first purchase with SeatGeek. All right, second round begins with Michael Thomas off the board. Michael Thomas. Joe Mixon, then Travis Kelsey. There he goes at 203. Odell Beckham Jr., and Juju Smith-Schuster back-to-back mm. -back with the fourth and fifth picks of the second round. And here I am. Right ahead of you, Jason. Yes. So Hopkins off the board already. Some running backs in consideration. Dalvin Cook, who I love this year. Damian Williams, we've talked a lot about him. Um, at the wide receiver position, you've got Antonio Brown. You've got Mike Evans. T.Y. Hilton, the rubber meets the road. I know that I'm going to see. I think there's a limited amount of running backs I'm really excited for here. And because I didn't get one in the first round, I'm really looking at Dalvin Cook. I'm really looking at Damian Williams. Um, and, and then beyond that, you know, maybe I don't have the same confidence you do in tier 
three tier four guys. Sure. Tier three, pretty much gone. Tier four, you're looking at Damian Williams, Devonta Freeman, Dalvin Cook, Josh Jacobs. I love Dalvin Cook. He, I feel like I can make the kind of arguments for Dalvin Cook that you try to make for Sammy Watkins, only Dalvin Cook's career is not as long. But on a per-game basis, Cook is dominant. And I feel a lot of confidence in the way that offense is, is turning. Now, you have a smirk on your face. You're probably happy I took Dalvin Cook. But I have Hopkins. I'm going with Dalvin Cook, and you're on the clock. The smirk on my face is just making the per-game argument for Dalvin Cook and against Sammy Watkins. But I get, I well, get the longevity. Yeah, Watkins, five years of per-game argument. Sure. Um, so I, I was... But you're taking Watkins here, right? Uh, yes, <laughs> for sure. Um, the... The, I was d- disappointed to see Odell Beckham and Juju Smith-Schuster fall oh, off one man. pick before so close. you because I was really, really hoping that Juju Smith-Schuster would get to me here. Um, I am basically, because I've got David Johnson in tow, uh, you know, I could I could stack with Damian Williams, but I, I think I'll be fine in the next round at running back. I'm looking between two wide receivers here. Uh, I, You know, if Kelsey was on the board, I would entertain that. With him out, no quarterback, no tight end. Uh, I like the wide receivers that are available here. Uh, getting one of the guys that I really like, and I'm between Mike Evans and Antonio Brown. And interesting, you know, it's one of those things. If you haven't listened to our Spitballers uh, podcast, our Spitballers podcast that releases every Monday is a non-football Correct. podcast, and we do a draft every. every it is draft. nonsense as it well. Is, it is nonsense, and. Uh, we do a draft, you know, video game characters or whatever, and I I placate to the polls. Yes, you, we a, call you the Pander Bear. The Pander Bear. And it cost you last week. It, it uh, sure on did. On Spitballers because you decided in a in the annals of, of history of video games, we're drafting just four each. And in the annals of video games, you decided to go with Fortnite uh, you know, in was, order to pander I, to it, what you thought was apparently a bunch of fourteen-year-olds listening to our show. It it was it was a and mistake. It backfired on you. It was a mistake for sure. It definitely backfired. So on now me. you're trying to figure out what's the pander here then. Well, I'm just wondering if Antonio Brown's popularity. Here's the key. Why don't you draft would, the best team? Why don't you? Why don't you draft the best possible team that right. you can? Because we're going head to head on drafting the best team. Okay. If People that, listen to the show. They understand who's good. If that's the case. Then I am going to go with what I believe versus the poll. I mean, both are worthy picks, but I, I genuinely think Mike Evans is as safe. Uh, I'm fine with him as my number one. He is a double-digit touchdown threat. While Antonio Brown has always been that, I don't believe Antonio Brown with the Raiders uh, and Derek Carr is going to be a ten-plus touchdown threat this season. So, you know, I, I see That's him. the rubber meets the road argument here, where you finally have to stare down Evans and Antonio Brown and what you believe about him. Yeah. So I, uh, I'll i go with Mike Evans. Yeah. I mean, we are, we're we head-to-head drafting what we believe uh, will be the best possible team, 12-team, half-point league. You have David Johnson, Mike Evans through two rounds. I have DeAndre Hopkins, Dalvin Cook. Brooks, out of curiosity, since we're very competitive – through two rounds, which pairing would you prefer? Oh, it's a great question. Between Hopkins and Cook or Johnson and Evans. Do you have any thoughts? DJ and Evans. Yeah. All right. It's yeah. close, though. It's okay to be wrong. Damian Williams, Adam Thielen go right after Evans. Uh, Nick Chubb and then Antonio Brown does go at the end of the second round. T.Y. Hilton ends the second round, one ahead of our first quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, going at 301. We're seeing that a lot. Leonard Fournette, Devonta Freeman, A.J. Green, and Zach Ertz. Now, Jason, this yeah. is the first time so far where I'm sitting here and I want a player to drop to me. I do not want one player to go off the board here. It is your pick. I do not want you to make the pick that I want. It won't be. So please don't. Uh, I'm going to make the pick that I want. I'm going to make the pick that I believe is the best player available on the board. Uh I'm madly in love with him. Everybody knows. I think there's going to be a huge breakout this year. While I like some players like Derrick Henry and Josh Jacobs, they're worthy picks here maybe. This is a half point per reception league. I'm going to take the most talented running back who's going to break out and be a superstar this year. It's my boy. It's Carrion Johnson. Oh, my goodness. Carry on. Carry on my wayward son. Don't you cry no more. 
Thank you. You're welcome. I will not cry because you allowed Josh Jacobs to slip to me. Uh, I will take Josh Jacobs here. So interesting, when I took Mike Evans, my plan was to get Josh Jacobs. In the next round. In the next round. Yes. Uh, I thought if I don't go Antonio Brown, because I wouldn't have wanted to go Antonio Brown and Josh Jacobs. Um, and at this point in the offseason, Jacobs in the third is going to be a good pick. But I truly, I went and I looked at my rankings that I've poured so much time, energy, effort into, and I have carry on beating Josh Jacobs this year, so I, I had to pivot. No, I understand it. And this is where, you know, like our consensus, we've got them back to back, Jacobs and carry on Johnson. Um, I love the potential workload for both guys. I, I think that they're both breakouts. I think we have them both as breakouts in our ultimate draft kit. So, um, I feel pretty good about I was looking at Jacobs a little bit in the Dalvin Cook range. I like Cook more. Waited around, got Jacobs. So through three rounds, you have David Johnson, Mike Evans, carry on Johnson. So two running backs, one wide receiver. And I have Hopkins, Cook, and Jacobs, two running backs, one wide receiver. Nothing too crazy. After Jacobs went off the board in the third round, went Aaron Jones, who if you had taken Jacobs, let me put it this way. If you had taken Jacobs, I would have taken Aaron Jones over carry on Johnson. Sure. He would have been the next pick. Marlon Mack at 309. Julian Edelman at 310. I would have loved to see Julian Edelman slip back into the fourth round for me. Derrick Henry, Sony Michelle, Stephon Diggs, George Kittle off the board at 402. Amari Cooper, Keenan Allen, and Mark Ingram off the board just before my pick here in the fourth round. What's going on? I just I'm I I can't I can't. You gotta make your pick. I'm I'm uh you're having a hard time. I know who I want, and I don't even I don't even want to say I know who I want because now you're going to pick based on my correct rankings. I don't rankings. do that. You see, I don't really – I'm not a panda bear. I just draft championship teams in all my drafts. Well, you great. see what I'm saying? I don't have to pander to anybody just if my team wins the just title. Just don't take my guy because I'm, I'm – I mean, I'm just – look, the championship's going to come home when I grab this guy in the fourth. Uh, well, I'm going to talk – briefly about some of the decisions on the board because uh, that's what the listeners want to hear, yeah. the decision-making process here. Uh, I'm not thinking in any way, shape, or form about jumping on Aaron Rodgers here or a quarterback. I'm also not looking at the tight end position. At the wide receiver position... What, out of curiosity, yeah. if, if, if Kittle was here in the fourth, are you willing to spend a fourth rounder on George Kittle, he's you know that that huge tear break, the top three tight ends. I'm not. No. I'm not either. No, no, and it's a good question to bring up because it, look, Kittle had a majestic year, but there were a lot of things that that went his way, and there you know he broke records at the yardage number, and you've got a healthier uh, wide receiving core this season. Um, I'm not willing to spin up expecting George Kittle to break records again, and so and I also like Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks is there, on the board at the right. Are, too many good players on the board. That's my issue. Is it in the fourth round? There are so many really valuable running backs and wide receivers where it's like, if you don't know for sure that you've got an Ertz or a Kelsey, and I don't think we do with with Kittle, then it, it's tough to to have well, that hole at running back or wide receiver. I think what's funny is I know who you're going to take. Oh, you do. Uh, it, now, and I, and I I'm not. I'm not going to take him because Fantastic. because I think we're going to draft teammates. You're going to grab taking, Brandon Cooks. I'm taking Brandon Cooks, and I'm guessing that you are then taking Robert Woods. <laughs> Yeah, and um, oh, it's uh, interesting because when I look at our teams, and just to break it down for a second, uh, and you can make your pick since uh, yeah. I know what it's going to be. Oh, I, as soon as I, I took, saw him, I there. took Brandon Cooks. Now I feel like Brandon Cooks is a wonderful compliment for a player like DeAndre Hopkins in my wide receiver core. Sure, Brandon Cooks is the big play receiver in Los Angeles. He is a production machine, but it doesn't come as stably as a player like Robert Woods, and I understand that. At the same time. You waited until the second round to grab your wide receiver, Mike Evans. He's got some uh, consistency concerns only at the quarterback position, not as a, a talent, but he doesn't have the stability that uh, Hopkins represents. And Woods represents more week-to-week -week stability. So I think this is a win-win for both of our teams. Yeah, I, I see. I mean, I've, I've got Robert Woods right now in my top 10 wide receivers. So to get someone that I truly believe has that capability, I mean, he was a wide receiver one last season in the fourth round. This is why... Early in the offseason, I said Woods is going to be a good value in every draft. Nobody wants him. He's just He was in the league too long doing nothing for bad teams and bad quarterbacks. I don't think it's true that nobody wants him. Well, you I'm, could have made that argument two years nobody ago. Nobody wants him as their wide receiver one. Nobody. And neither do you because you took him in the fourth round. Sure, but my point is – But you would be content with him as that? The view, the view hmm. is that he's not a wide receiver one. 
And and there and he's are not. other and he's not. That's the real key. Other than last year where he <laughs> was, and I currently no, have I, him stepped. Look, up. Robert Woods is a stable um, wide receiver. You're not going to get big touchdown totals from Robert Woods. I have a problem here. Well, you took Woods. I took Cooks. Carson went next. Cup, Galladay, Andrew Luck, and Philip Lindsay finished the fourth round. Drake, Geis, O.J. Howard, Aaron Rodgers. I have a real problem. Tyler Lockett. And here we are. Jason's on the clock. And... So, decisions to be made, Mr. Watkins. Are, well, that's the, I have a Sammy Watkins problem. Watkins right here at the sixth pick of the fifth round is perfect value. I, I would take Watkins. I would, I would be so happy in the fifth round to grab Watkins if he was my wide receiver too. And I've got three stud running backs, and I, I would love to build a team that way. Right now, I've got two running backs, two wide receivers, so I'm really going – for my flex depth piece. And while I think the ceiling is higher on Sammy Watkins, I look at the running backs, and I, this is where I start to see a precipitous drop. There aren't, um, you know, I, I think next round you're going to be having guys that you're, you know, are you going to be in that Latavius Murray, uh, you know, Tariq Cohen area? I think David Mopportunity, a.k.a. David Montgomery, is a great pick. You got you grabbed your rookie earlier in Josh Jacobs. I think that grabbing David Montgomery in the fifth round is a great value. So I'm I'm really trying to decide between those two players. Well, you bring up the good point. I mean, I I look at the value of David Montgomery, and I would have trouble leaning on two rookies for my top three running backs. If he, if he dropped to me, I don't think I could take him. Uh, with the history of Cook's consistency and then Jacobs being a rookie, I don't think I would go with Montgomery myself, despite him being a nice value here. H have you gotten any closer to a decision, Mr. Moore? <sighs> I, I want Sammy Watkins, but I, um, I'm i going to take David Montgomery because I, I need my third running back to be solid. I don't want to end up in a in a place where I'm hoping that my third running back is – you know, is is a Jarek McKinnon or perfect examples. So Miles Sanders, I see Miles Sanders' situation and David Montgomery as very different. Some people see them very similar. If you're a Miles Sanders believer, then take Sammy Watkins here, hope that Miles Sanders, you know, the rookie for Philadelphia Eagles, comes through in the next round. But I think David Montgomery is has a better chance of being a three-down back than uh, Miles Sanders does. Yeah, and... um it puts me in a tough position here because I'm 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 laboring to kind of decide which direction to go at this point. Um, on the running back wide receiver? Yeah, one running back wide receiver decision. I think some people, you know, for someone like me who has Deshaun Watson as my number three overall quarterback with top, you know, top two potential. I've got him number two. Yeah, so we, we love Watson compared to the consensus. Now, his average draft position in leagues is right around here. He, he normally goes at the end of the fifth round. Um, Mahomes, Luck, Rodgers have already gone. Um, and, you know, with someone like Montgomery, I feel like that was the tear break at running back. Other running back considerations here, Tariq Cohen, you know, I could take <laughs> – we could take teammates back in back-to-back -back, um, uh, rounds. James White on the board. Lamar Miller. Lamar Miller on the board who has the job, but I have Hopkins on that offense. Sure. And uh, Oh, so you're saying that Deshaun Watson would give you the stack as well. It would. It would give me the stack, and also I was saying I don't want to stack. Like, I'll stack Watkins, or I'm sorry, I'll stack Hopkins and Watson, but I don't want to stack Lamar Miller and Hopkins right, because in this situation. you can't get a touchdown for both players on the same drive one way. Correct. You can on the other. And people ask that a lot. Do you like to stack – uh, we were asked on the footcast yesterday, what's the most gratifying play? Is it the quarterback wide receiver uh, touchdown together? Or is it the 60 yard bomb? And or is it the multi touchdown game? And we both said, It's the stack. It's just such a knife to your opponent. There's only one way that when you're playing fantasy football, one play can give you two touchdowns. And that's a great thing. So I, I want to, even though in, on most mock drafts, we do not take a quarterback at this level. I feel like this is the situation where because I'm looking at who's on the board, because I'm pretty happy with like about eight running backs right now and about a, ha a handful of wide receivers. You know, Watkins is on the board, but I have guys like Mike Williams ahead of him. 
Um, I think I will make the jump because I have Deshaun, and you can be happy about it. I'm so happy. Oh, be happy. I'm so happy right now. I'm going to take my number three overall quarterback. I'm going to take the stack of Hopkins and Watson, and I'm going to let that fuel this team with the foundation of Dalvin Cook, Josh Jacobs, and Brandon Cooks. And I, I want to see what happens because that's why we mock draft. It's not necessarily a bad pick. It really isn't. And I oh, think that means so much. I, I, we made the case for him with the stack. I would never have done that personally, even though it is. It's not a terrible move. I just don't want to sacrifice the running backs and wide receivers at this point in the draft. It, and like I said, if Mon Montgomery represented a different tier of running back there than anybody else on well, the board, I'm glad I made your team worse. So you made my team worse. Now, if you had taken. For instance, Devontae Adams at 106, and Rodgers had dropped to 506, would you not have been thinking for I, a moment? I would not have been thinking for a moment. Okay. That's fine. I mean, I guess I would have thought about it, but I would have... Refused that temptation. I would have moved past yeah. the thought. Yeah, well, I didn't do it. I didn't move past it. I... Unfortunately, Sammy Watkins went uh, two picks oh, after your pick. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Now, I thought about taking Watkins just to troll you there. But at the end of the day, I have Mike Williams ranked higher. Now, I'm super disappointed because Mike Williams went right after him, and I thought Mike Williams would get around to me in the next round, but he didn't. Calvin Ridley, Watkins, Williams, and Godwin, four breakout contenders at wide receiver, went next. Uh, Cohen finished the fifth round. Now, only one running back. This is See, to me, this is a risk that paid off because I, I was looking at solidifying running back. Right. Montgomery went before me. And only one running back went off the board between this pick Watson and the next round. So the aforementioned Lamar Miller. And yeah, they're all on the board. Lamar Miller's on the board. James White. Uh, Miles Sanders on the board. Um, Ebron, Landry, Baker, Tyreek Hill. So somebody took Tyreek at 604. And then Hunter Henry at 605. So now I'm looking at, hey, what's the best bang for my buck at the running back position right now? I have a team with a rookie and Josh Jacobs. I have Dalvin Cook. I want the carries. I'm going for carries. Um, I'm not going to play the James White card here. The pass catching flex guy. I'm going for carries, and carries is Lamar Miller. So I will take him. I'm going to go full on Houston. I'm going to revolt against my previous position, and I'm going to take the carries here simply for value. All right. I, uh, I, I hope that the Texans play Jacksonville. All the time, for your sake, for my sake. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm sitting here, and this is it's really interesting. So every mock draft, every real draft I've done this entire off season, I have I don't remember ending up other than one mock draft I think we did on the show where we took Kelsey early. I don't remember ever getting a tight end in the middle rounds. I just don't do it. I I refuse to grab one of these middle tier Eric Ebron's, Hunter Henry's when there are quality. Um, wide receivers and running backs on the board but my fourth you know I think there's a big tier break after the the top three then I'd see OJ Howard and El Evan Ingram as like the next big massive teardrop and Evan Ingram is still here after Eric Ebron after Hunter Henry and I look down and I go you know if I don't have Evan Ingram I hate the tight ends you know I what late tight end are you targeting the most this year, Andy? It's a good question. Um, Jared Cook. Jared Cook's probably the guy, because I know I'm higher on him than both of uh, you two. Actually, Mike's pretty high on Jared Cook as well, so yeah, it's I, just you. Yeah, um, but if you go deeper than that, I mean, I'm probably just trying to steal value. Greg, yeah. Greg Olson. Greg Olson is Greg the Olson's guy that I'm... Greg super late. Um, yeah, he's the guy that I'm targeting as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, now, that being said, if I, if I did that, that means I would have Mike... Evans and Robert Woods and I would be going into the seventh round looking for my third wide receiver while guys like Tyler Boyd DJ Moore are on the board right now um, if I could grab Tyler Boyd if I knew that Tyler Boyd or DJ Moore would get back to me in the next round I would take Evan Ingram for sure so I'm gonna find out there's a mock draft if you're doing mock drafts at home do things like this it, it's kind of like what you just said I want to see yeah. what happens if I end up taking the value on Evan Ingram in the late sixth, does now I, that screw me over? Well, and, and what I want to focus on here is that it felt as though you were upon a high horse, upon a pedestal, it just bemoaning my foolishness in mm -hmm. Deshaun Watson. And then one round later, you decided to take your own risk at the tight end position. So I just want to focus mm -hmm. more on the hypocrisy on the, of your 
de- you know, decision making. Oh, I or thought... the imitation of the great decision making I made. Oh, I thought I did it around later than you. <laughs> and then I thought I did tight end <laughs> instead of quarterback, where there's plenty of late quarterbacks sure, I like. Sure, sure. Um, no, you're sadly mistaken. Oh, okay. Uh, Evan Ingram off the board to you. Alshon Jeffrey. Oh, gosh, my heart is broken because I see who went off the board and who I was hoping to come around to me. Who? Jeff Jeffrey. Uh, Robbie Anderson. Uh, Alshon Jeffrey off the board. Then James White, Tyler Board, Jordan Howard, DJ Moore, Tevin Coleman, Jared Cook, Matt Ryan. <sighs> and Robbie Anderson, just two picks ahead of you. Robbie Anderson is gone. He was the profound value I was going to just – scream for joy with the value of a 707 at Robbie Anderson because I love him, but I don't get to. And that is because – you want to know why I don't get to? Uh, tell me. It's because I drafted Deshaun Watson. Mm, so yeah. that was the price I paid and honestly, for the I'm, stack. That's the price I paid for the stack. I, I'm I'm paying the price right now as well. I was really <laughs> hoping that DJ Moore would come back, and I pay the price for the uh, early tight end. You know, if anything, it shows that when you're in the, thr- when you're in the middle of the draft – now, look, I was going to tell you before I insulted you Evan Ingram was by far the best value uh, tight end wise. I mean, just a different tier level. We all have him ranked that way. So it, it still made logical sense at 607, but now you pay the price. When you take quarterback or tight end early, you pay the price. Yeah. So now what are you going to do, Jason? Well, I, you know, I feel like my team desperately needs a wide receiver. Uh, I, I'm very happy with Mike Evans and Robert Woods, but I, that's two guys. I need more than two. Um, at running back, if I were to go that way, Miles Sanders is still there. Um, Rashad Penny, you know, there's 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 some hopefuls, but not guarantees. And so I don't. If I, I were you, I'd go with D- I'd go with Doug Baldwin. Yeah. Um, tempting, very tempting. Um, Can I make an argument so for I'm really, Doug Baldwin? I'm between two players here. I'm between Allen Robinson and Dante Pettis. I think yeah. Both, so explain the way that you view both those guys for your team's makeup. Right. So I have Dante Pettis ranked slightly ahead of Allen Robinson because he he has to me much more breakout potential. However, very exciting player. Very exciting player. However, it, it it could very well happen that he's not the one on his team. Kittle is the dominant one. Then Pettis. You know, last year when Pettis broke out, Goodwin was gone. Uh, you know, Pierre Garçon was gone. They didn't obviously have Debo Samuel or Jalen Hurd yet. Now you get Goodwin back. Kittle is there. Uh, Pettis uh, or Debo Samuel and um, Jalen Hurd are there. So Pettis could very well be a very bad pick here. But his ceiling to me is much higher than Allen Robinson. So I look at my team and I say, well, what do I need? Do I need a swing for the fences pick here? Or do I need a, a guy that can be relied on as the one for his team and I think that's the truth I think that my team because I've only got two wide receivers bye weeks injuries I want another more tried and true guy so I'm actually going to draft Allen Robinson well this spot yeah it's interesting because if if you went into my brain while you were talking then it was me desperately hoping you would take Allen Robinson yeah because I know how high we both are on the potential of Dante Pettis. Yeah, and, and for me, I was going to be staring down a very tough decision if Pettis didn't drop to me there. I wanted Pettis. I thank you for your now, decision. Did, did you not realize Will Fuller was available? Because <laughs> you could have really just gone full Houston full Texans. psychopath, yes. Or are you just planning on Kiki QT later? Uh, of course. Okay. Of course. Um, can you draft Bill O'Brien? Brooks, can you look <laughs> into this? Is Bill O'Brien available? I don't think so. No coach spot? Okay. So you went Robinson. I understand the logic. I went Pettis, the upside, needed another wide receiver. So uh, we both went wide outs in the seventh round. Russell Wilson went next. Miles Sanders, Daryl Henderson, a couple of rookies. Carson Wentz, Cam Newton ending out the round, uh, which I believe, not that you don't already know this, but I believe that leaves two teams without a quarterback at this point in the draft. I'm going to guess one of them is mine. That is correct. Cream Hunt, Will Fuller, Rashad Penny, Vance McDonald, and Latavius Murray. I am on the clock. Um, some different players worth mentioning as I stare down this draft selection. Look, like you said, Pettis has more risk than some other solid contributors at the position. Um, you know, a player like Larry Fitzgerald, for good or for bad, you kind of know what you get. A player like Dante Pettis, you're not certain. Players like uh, Miko Hardman, you don't know. A lot of hype lately. You read the hype on Nikhil Harry? Anybody? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
hype train in full force for Nikhil Harry, working with the ones, I working love, with Deion Brown. I Branch. love Nikhil Harry's future. I'm not sold on a rookie wide receiver in a system like the Patriots that usually takes people time to adapt and get used to. Neither am I, which is why I'm taking Geronimo Allison. Oh, I love Another it. Another wide receiver with upside, one of our favorite uh, uh, breakout uh, sleeper type of guys. Eighth round pick here, Geronimo Allison should be the clear number two target. Now, being the number two, that is a there's a big gap between Devontae Adams and the number two. But when uh, Rodgers is throwing them the ball, I think this is the perfect, like the Pettis-Allison combo here. I like uh, that for my team. I like the opportunity for breakout at the position, and I felt solid enough. Now, the Lamar Miller, the carries that I bought, even though they're painful to buy, Lamar Miller is painful to draft. Okay, so I've made the jokes over how you know you've drafted a lot of Texans, but as the Lamar Miller owner, are you interested in being the Deonta Foreman owner as you later know, in the draft? Yeah, as as a backup, as a handcuff. As Probably a, not. Okay, so and and, and reg oh, so regardless of this team or because you've got so many Texans, uh, regardless of this team, because I took Miller as my third running back. Uh, if I was, you know, if Miller was going to be a tried and true leaned on, can't flex somebody else over him, I have to play him week in, week out, I'd probably be in more of a position where I would want to hedge against uh, a problem, something coming up. But because it's not that situation, because I have so many Texans, at this point, I'm not looking at, oh my gosh, I got to get Deontay Foreman at the end of this draft. Mm -hmm. That's not my mindset. All right, so here I am on the clock. My team, as it stands right now, three running backs, David Johnson, Carrion Johnson, and David Montgomery. So they all at least share one of their first or last names with it's someone else. so important. Very important. Um, you've got <laughs> wide receivers, Mike Evans, Robert Woods, and Allen Robinson. I've got Evan Ingram. I love the start of my team here. I think that it is solid at both positions so right, and you now, see the benefit of not taking quarterback uh, right and there's a lot i mean i can tantalize you I, i'll let you know jason I, you might not be aware ryan fitzpatrick's still on the board you can get him what right here right now fantastic did you see that no look pass look if i was going to take a quarterback here and it is a little bit tempting because of jared goff jared goff to me is a is a top 10 he's quarterback a, he's in the tier sure. where you'd be proud to draft i've got robert woods so we'd both Woo! have a stack but i'd have him way later um, but I'm, you know, the reality is I look at the running back position here. I, I like my three running backs a lot, but you need running back depth at the end of your draft. I like to have more running backs and wide receivers or a tie. Um, and if that's the case, I'm going to need to get busy taking some running backs cause it's trash. It is. It's a, it's a garbage dump wasteland at running back at this point. Here are the best available guys. I could go to LaShawn McCoy, which I'm on record saying, no, thank you. Yeah, hard pass. A hard pass. Royce Freeman. You could take Jarek McKinnon. Last year I was very high on him. Whoever the main guy is for the Niners will be good. But is it him? I don't know. You're you're getting to uh, Roy, Royce Freeman and Jalen Samuels and backups. So I'm going to take the last guy that I'm that I believe is a starter right now that is not 120 years old with the mileage of Shady. And I'm actually going to take Peyton Barber, who, uh, you know, I don't see him as some great, awesome running back, but when you can get a starting running back How does that as feel? your fourth, it feels, it feels solid. I okay. feel like I've got a an important bye week injury risk uh, matchup play for the flex position. All right, fair enough, fair enough, Peyton Barber. Um, oh! <laughs> you're, you're upset because Jared Goff went off one, one pick ahead of you right yes, now? Yes, I am. Barber, Harry, McKinnon, Shepard, Metcalf, and Joku ending the eighth. McCoy, Kirk, Samuels, Freeman, and then Goff right ahead of you, Jason. You're back on the clock. And for clarity, in case you're, uh, you don't remember, no defense, no kicker for this mock draft. So in terms of positions you got to fill, you obviously need, still need to fill your quarterback position, Jason, but then you have autonomy. I still need. Don't to tell me what I have to do. I still need to fill the tight end position. Yeah, and so here's the difference in quarterbacks and tight ends, right? At quarterback, if I was drafting now, I could grab Rivers. I could grab Kyler Murray. I could grab Jameis Winston. I could grab Jimmy Garoppolo. I could grab Josh Allen. There are so many options that I love that I'm not going to grab any of them. At tight end, if I was in the very unwanted position 
of not of having one not having yeah, one at this yeah point. that's such a desperate situation i could go gronk i could go yeah see you know no gronk's uh more in the baldwin category mm. the baldwin tier you should go tj hawkinson andy yeah well Get, rookie tight ends do great you're trying to implant some uh yeah um but my point is, you know, that this is why I took Evan Ingram because I do think it thins out a lot, and I really hope you have Kyle Rudolph at the end of this draft. So I am going to look between running back and wide receiver. I think I could go either direction. Um, so it's a matter of is there someone out there that I think presents a good value? Larry Fitzgerald is here, but I've got David Johnson. Um, Cortland Sutton is here who could be the one for, unfortunately, Joe Flacco. It, it's not the best – situation I've got Golden Tate out there if I want to go more PPR um at running back it was a garbage dump last round it's a garbage dump this round so I'm going to take a wide receiver off the board and his name is going to be Cortland Sutton yeah I mean if you look at the draft board right now the value is in the wide receiver position to me Marvin Jones Larry Fitzgerald Miko Hardman Corey Davis Players, Westbrook, players with Jackson. dedicated roles, right? Golden Tate in New York should have a pile of targets. Deshaun Jackson's on my short list of players to steal with the last pick of the draft. And I've talked to you way too much over the last few days about how much I love Deshaun Jackson this year. So, uh, you know, I look at the tight end position. I'm not taking one here. I want to let a guy like, like I'm, I'm probably looking at w w Trey Burton, Greg Olson. A lot of tight ends are off the board. At this point, I don't need to force that pick. I think the value's at wide out. I think I'm going to go three straight rounds taking that. But with the upside play of Pettis and Allison, might as well stack right on. Well, shoot. Now, it, seemed like, it seemed like you were going somewhere. It did. Did I, you see a player? I'm going to take, uh, take Marvin Jones. I'm going to take Marvin Jones at that position. I, I was between Jones and Mecole Hardman. Um but I'm going to take Marvin Jones. At this point, there's a lot of unknown surrounding, you know, at least as of this recording, still a lot of unknown around Tyreek Hill, reports how the depth chart might, shakes out. He reports he might be there at training camp. Yeah, I just don't want to take Hardman until the 10th or 11th round right now. Well, he did go one pick yeah, after you did. took Marvin Jones. He did. As And then Rivers, Carlos Hyde, Corey Davis, Kyler Murray, Larry Fitzgerald, Ronald Jones, Doug Baldwin – somehow drafted just in hopes of a return at this point based on uh, previous <laughs> ADP this summer. Yeah. Eckler, Emmanuel Sanders. I'm back on the clock. At this point, I, I figured the tight ends would slip through. I'm going to take Trey Burton. I'm going to wrap up the upside of Trey Burton that existed in argument last year, but I'm going to take him in the 10th round this year. I actually love this pick. I mean, I'm I'm not a, I'm not bullish. You're not a fan of me, but you are okay with the pick. Yeah, I mean, the reality is Trey Burton in the tenth. The reasons, the rationale for why Trey Burton was so hyped last year. If you've played fantasy a while, you know of the post hype sleeper. It's the guy that all the time. This is a very common thing. They get hyped up, they fail. Then the next year, they succeed because all the hype, all the rationale, the reasons was like this guy could break out. He didn't. Well, just give him a little bit more time. So in the 10th round, when you're deciding between, I mean, like I said, TJ Hawkinson and Austin Hooper and yeah, Trey Burton's a great value. So you, you, you did well for yourself here. Okay. Well, um, I appreciate that, Jason. For me, I, I'm, I'm shocked that Golden Tate is this low. I mean, yeah. I'm not bullish on him, but in a half point PPR or in a full point PPR targets, he's going to have plenty of volume, a great flex play if... Cortland Sutton doesn't pan out, and, you know, I, I think it's a good safe option for me. Well, I'm sad because Deshaun Jackson just went. I figured I could grab him in the next round. I couldn't. Deshaun Jackson went in the 10th round, three more quarterbacks off the board, and then QT, Washington, Funches, Garoppolo, Westbrook. Jason, we have two picks left to round out this head-to-head -head mock draft. You still need a quarterback, my friend. Oh, I do? That's and there's stupid. two picks left so well, you don't have to take one now you can wait till the last I round don't, and i'm i'm fine to wait till the next round and see what happens but with josh allen who is a top 10 fantasy quarterback in our rankings this year based on his rushing ability is on the board and i can grab him with my second to last pick i'm gonna do it i want to uh highlight something as i in the decision making process right here when you get to your last pick or the second to last pick a lot of times people want to take a shot at 
essentially um, a deep sleeper. And that's the temptation, right? Uh, maybe it would have, like last year, maybe it would have been Traquan Smith. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think you should. You should take someone safe? No, not necessarily. You should leave the draft. You should walk you out should of the room. just say, I don't need this pick. I'm that good. <laughs> Here's what you got to do. You need to take a deep sleeper that you get to see the proof of what they are earlier. In week one. In week one. Because you, you want to know why? Because you are probably going to want to play the waiver wire. And the deep sleeper that you don't get to see pay off. And, and the example I'll bring forward is I look at Devin Singletary and I go, man, I should take Devin Singletary. He's a running back that could emerge. But you know when he's going to do that? He's going to do it from week six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and on. I'm not going to know, and I'm going to cut him, right. even if he is that guy. It's actually you know who's not really, that guy? really good advice of thinking about how the season pans out from the get go. I, I last year, you know, I had my 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 super team. Yes, which leaving the draft, everybody knew was dominant, and then ended up being not as dominant. Not as dominant. Thank you, all in injuries, all players to all players. But um, what happened was early in that week one, I had a couple of injuries, and it was like I didn't I didn't have anybody that I knew I could cut. No, you. I remember you laboring over that. You're and like, was, oh, my team is too good. And it was a problem. So, yeah, uh, I like that. So, wh- who is that to you? Kalen Balash okay. is that player here in the 11th round. Because in week one, I know you love Kenyon Drake. I, I understand his efficiency and his ability. I'm actually going to draft him right here. Uh, Wait, what? Yeah, he's going to be a You're great drafting him in the 12th? Well, I really should have taken Kenyon Drake. No, but Kalen Balash to me is a player that in week one of the NFL season, you could be surprised. Absolutely. All of a sudden, it could be a 50-50 work, workload, and you've got a steal in the 11th round. And guess what if he's not? Goodbye. Farewell. Sayonara. Alvitason. Yes, goodbye. So I'm taking Kalen Blodge with the 11th, uh, my 11th round pick. It's my 12th round pick. It's my final pick. And um, I'm probably going to do the very same thing. One of, my, uh, one of the players I think is a value, but maybe he's not. But Matt Breed is off the board. <sighs> Look, that sucks. <laughs> what are you going to take him? 100% I was oh, going to take him. Oh, that makes him. me happy. It was the same exact argument you just made. Over, I'm taking two of them. And I'm going to figure it out in week one. I was going to tell you that you took the wrong one in Kalen <laughs> Balaj. You should have taken Matt Burita, who is really someone you've been beating oh, the yeah. drum for because you think he's yeah, going to be take, their starter. I'll take both, though. You know, In the last <laughs> round, Matt Burita is a fantastic pick. So I'm in the last round. Uh, David Johnson, Carrion Johnson, David Montgomery, and Peyton Barber. I feel like I need another one of those type of running backs where it's like maybe he could be the guy week one, so I will trade for Matt Burita. Andy, <laughs> can I interest you with the 1207? Uh, no, but I will accept Carrion Johnson in this one particular instance. Uh, all right. Well, if that's the case, I am going to uh, – I'm going to look at the running back position for sure and try to grab a guy that I think could, could, could be, be one more of those. than you think. Chris Thompson? To me, Justice Hill as a rookie. There's a couple rookies that I think, unlike Devin Singletary, Devin Singletary I, I believe in, I like him, but he is firmly behind on the depth chart right well, now. Well, because he's you're saying because he's a one and two down type of player, he needs that, whereas Justice Hill could come in and be a compliment day one. LaShawn McCoy, uh, exactly. Now, Deion Lewis, you know, is going to be a compliment, and he's still on the board. And he is still on the board, but I want a What guy... about Mike Davis, in case you're wrong about David M- Opportunity? Eh, I don't I don't want to play that game. If I'm wrong about David M- Opportunity, I'm going to... It's, it's not just going to be Mike Davis. It's sure. going to be their, they both suck. Okay. So I'm going to go with a guy that I think can actually be a much, much higher in Dynasty rankings. I think he could get off to a hot start. Take the Rex Burkhead role. That oh, I knew you were going with him. That everybody thought <laughs> last year could happen. I think Damian Harris with my last pick is great. I think you need to buy a Damian Harris jersey. I feel like he's – like we always do our three my guys, but then if they were like super deep my guys, right. he'd be in your super he deep list. He would be in my super deep list, yes. Well, that's it. All right. That's the whole roster. Let's hear our final teams. Andy, you go first. We'll save the best for the last. Uh, I thought you said I was going first. I did. Oh, great. Deshaun Watson is my quarterback. Starting running backs, Dalvin Cook and Josh Jacobs. Starting wideouts, DeAndre Hopkins and Brandon Cooks. My tight end is Trey Burton. My flex position will be some combination of Lamar Miller, Dante Pettis, Geronimo Allison, Marvin Jones, and a couple of wild cards. Wild card! Kalen Balazs and Matt Burita. All right. Uh, my quarterback is Josh Allen. Running backs, David Johnson, Carrion Johnson, 
David Mopportunity Montgomery, Peyton Barber, and Damian Harris. At wide receiver, I've got Mike Evans, Robert Woods, Allen Robinson, Cortland Sutton, Golden Tate, and no one else. Well, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. And shout me. out to Sleeper. Always fun to draft on the platform. Makes it easy. You guys could see it if you're on YouTube. And uh, we, put, we put a couple extra tricks out there for YouTube this week. You, yeah. You know, a couple of yeah. little, uh, little gems out there. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed them. Yeah. So before we close out the show. Pristine deal of the day. All right. Yesterday on pristineauction.com. An Amari Cooper signed Dallas Cowboys jersey was sold to Brooks for $74.86. <laughs> I wish. I just assume Brooks buys all the Dallas I gear. Every single one of them. Um, but you can register at pristineauction.com. It's free. If you use the code BALLERS, when you register, you get $5 towards a future memorabilia purchase on the platform. Hundreds of daily auctions. Be sure to check it out. Jason, do you have any concluding words? Um how, what's your confidence level that you'll uh, end up on the right side of the poll today? Um, I think my confidence level is 66%. Okay. I'm more in the... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'll come out on top, but you, you never that, know. Yeah. I mean, my percentage was higher, so I, I doubt it. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the mock draft. We'll be back with you. And a reminder, go to BallersLive.com. Come see us. Chicago, New York, San Francisco, L.A., and Phoenix. We'd love to have you out. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And a reminder, Foot Clan Turo is the largest car sharing marketplace in the world where you can book any car you want from a community of trusted hosts. You can get exotic sports cars or pickup trucks. Turo has a wide selection available anywhere. Just download the Turo app, that's T-U-R-O, on the App Store or Google Play, or visit Turo.com, and you get $25 off your first trip when you sign up with the promo code FOOTBALLERS at checkout. Terms apply.